Title, Whispers in the Mist As I set foot on the forsaken island, an unsettling chill gripped my heart. The stories of this godforsaken place had haunted my childhood, whispered around campfires and passed down through generations. It was the kind of island parents warned their children about, the sort of place that filled your dreams with terror. The sun hung low in the sky, casting long shadows upon the sandy shore. Seagulls cried out overhead, as if warning me to turn back. But I was here, for a reason, determined to uncover the truth that had remained hidden for centuries. The island had been deserted for as long as anyone could remember, abandoned for reasons that no one could explain. My research led me to believe that something sinister lurked beneath the island's history, something that had kept people away for generations. With each step I took into the eerie silence, the hairs on the back of my neck stood on end. The forest that covered most of the island was thick and oppressive, casting the area in a perpetual twilight. A damp mist clung to the trees like ghostly fingers, and the leaves whispered secrets I couldn't decipher. Every rustle and snap sounded like footsteps, but I knew I was alone. As I ventured deeper into the wilderness, the silence seemed to grow louder. There was an unnatural hush, as if the island itself held its breath. The dense undergrowth clawed up my clothing, slowing my progress, and the feeling of being watched by unseen eyes was unshakable. Hours turned into days, and I lost all sense of time. My compass spun aimlessly, and the map I carried was a labyrinth of confusion. I had no choice but to continue, my obsession pushing me forward into the heart of the island. The nights on the island were the worst. I could feel a malevolent presence lurking in the shadows, circling me as I tried to sleep. I built a crude shelter of sticks and leaves, but it offered no comfort. Whispers, soft as the breeze, filled my ears. They spoke of terrible things, of souls lost and tormented, of ancient rituals that had stained the very earth I walked upon. One night, as I lay awake, the whispers grew louder. They spoke of a hidden chamber deep within the island, a place where unimaginable evil had been locked away. This was the source of the island's darkness, the key to all the unsolved mysteries that had plagued it for centuries. Determined to uncover this chamber, I forged onward. The forest seemed to conspire against me, with roots that snaked across my path and branches that reached out to snatch at me. And always, the whispers followed me, guiding me closer to my sinister goal. I reached a clearing, and in the center stood a gnarled tree, its twisted branches reaching for the heavens like skeletal fingers. In the moonlight, I saw a peculiar symbol etched into its trunk, a mark I had seen before in my research. It was the key, the mark that would lead me to the hidden chamber. The whispers urged me to place my hand upon the symbol, and as I did, a hidden passage revealed itself before me. A dark, narrow tunnel descended into the earth, and I had no choice but to follow. The walls were cold and damp, and the air grew thick with the stench of decay. My footsteps echoed in the darkness, and I could feel the weight of centuries pressing down on me. The tunnel led to a massive underground chamber, its walls lined with ancient, weathered stones. The eerie glow of my lantern revealed symbols and writings that defied any known language. In the center of the chamber was a stone altar, and upon it rested a book bound in human skin. As I approached the book, the whispers grew louder, urging me to open it. Trembling, I lifted the heavy cover, and the pages inside were filled with horrifying illustrations of unspeakable rituals and grotesque creatures. The knowledge contained within this tome was too much for any mortal to bear. I knew then that I had stumbled upon the heart of the island's darkness, a place where the most vile and forbidden secrets were kept. The island had been cursed by the ancient inhabitants, 
who had sought to seal away an unspeakable evil. But the seal had weakened over the centuries, and now it was up to me to reseal it. As I turned to leave, I heard a voice, cold and mocking, emanating from the shadows. So, you have found it, the voice hissed. I spun around to see a figure emerging from the darkness, a wraith-like specter with hollow eyes that seemed to pierce my very soul. The specter explained that the book held the key to the island's curse, a curse that could only be broken by a willing sacrifice. And that sacrifice, it seemed, had to be me. In a desperate bid to escape, I turned and ran, but the passages seemed to shift and change, leading me deeper into the labyrinthine catacombs. The specter's laughter echoed in my ears, and I knew there was no way out. Hours turned into days, and I lost all sense of time. The torch on my lantern flickered and died, leaving me in utter darkness. The whispers had become screams, a cacophony of torment that threatened to shatter my mind. I stumbled through the tunnels, my hands bloodied and bruised, until I could no longer tell where I was or where I was going. Finally, I reached a dead end, and the specter appeared before me once more, its eyes blazing with malevolence. It was time, it said, time to complete the ritual and seal the curse once and for all but I would not be its pawn. With the last of my strength, I hurled the cursed book into a pit of black, bubbling tar that lay at the end of the tunnel. The specter shrieked in agony as the book was consumed by the darkness, and then it was gone, leaving me alone in the suffocating silence. I stumbled back through the tunnels, and this time, they led me back to the surface. The island had fallen silent once more, the whisper stilled, and the malevolent presence vanished. The sun was rising on the horizon, and the mist that had clung to the forest had lifted. I knew that the curse was broken, that the island was free from its ancient torment. But at what cost? I had narrowly escaped becoming a sacrifice, but the island had claimed a part of me, something that could never be returned. As I made my way back to the shore, I couldn't help but look back at the island one last time. It had been a place of nightmares and unspeakable horrors, and I had come dangerously close to becoming one of its tormented souls. The boat that had brought me to the island was waiting, and I stepped aboard, leaving that cursed place behind. The island faded into the distance, a dark silhouette against the rising sun, a place of eternal darkness that would haunt my nightmares for the rest of my days. And as I sailed away, the whispers returned, carried on the wind, a reminder that some secrets are better left buried, some curses better left unbroken. Title, Island of the Fractured Mind the desolation of the island was absolute. Miles of untouched beaches stretched out before me, the ocean waves crashing against the shore in a rhythmic, hypnotic pattern. I had been drawn to this forsaken place, captivated by the idea of isolation and the haunting beauty of a deserted island. As I set foot on the sandy shore, I felt a deep sense of unease settle over me. The solitude was overwhelming, and the knowledge that I was completely cut off from the outside world was like a weight on my chest. I had chosen this isolation, but it was already beginning to take a toll on my mind. The days turned into weeks, and I fell into a monotonous routine of survival. Food was scarce, and I was forced to rely on my meager fishing skills and the occasional find of fruits and berries. Loneliness and silence became my only companions, and they began to gnaw at the edges of my sanity. Each night, I would huddle in a makeshift shelter, shivering from the cold and the fear that seemed to seep from the very ground beneath me. The island was cast in an eerie, perpetual twilight, and the trees that surrounded my camp seemed to whisper secrets that I could never quite understand. As the weeks turned into months, the isolation began to play tricks on my mind. I started to see things, shadowy figures that darted just out of my line of sight and heard voices that whispered cruel and mocking words. 
I knew it was just my imagination, a product of the solitude, but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. One evening, as I wandered deeper into the forest in search of food, I stumbled upon an abandoned campsite. The fire was still smoldering, and a torn, weather-beaten journal lay discarded on the ground. I picked it up and began to read. The journal was filled with the ramblings of a previous inhabitant of the island. They spoke of strange occurrences of the island itself coming to life. The writer described seeing grotesque, shifting forms in the shadows and hearing voices that whispered in languages they couldn't understand. As I read, a chill swept over me, for the experiences described in the journal mirrored my own. The writer had descended into madness, and I couldn't help but wonder if I was heading down the same path. The island seemed to close in around me, the forest growing thicker and more oppressive. The silence became deafening, and the shadows seemed to move of their own accord. My own reflection in the calm waters of the island's lagoon would sometimes distort, showing me twisted, monstrous versions of myself. I knew I had to leave, but the island had a way of trapping me, of making it impossible to escape. My compass spun aimlessly, and the map I carried was a confusing jumble of lines and symbols that led me in circles. It was as though the island itself was playing tricks on my mind, twisting my sense of direction. The psychological horror of the island reached its zenith one night when I awoke to find myself restrained by vines that seemed to have a life of their own. They wound around my body, squeezing the air from my lungs, and I gasped for breath. Then, in the darkness, I saw them twisted, grotesque forms emerging from the shadows. They whispered words that cut into my soul, mocking my fears and insecurities. The figures reached out to me and their touch was cold and painful. I fought against the vines, struggling to break free, but they only tightened their grip. The figures drew closer, their whispers growing louder, their mocking laughter echoing in my ears. I felt as though I was losing my mind, that the island itself was a living, malevolent force feeding on my fear and despair. In a moment of sheer terror, I managed to break free from the vines and ran through the forest, pursued by the haunting figures. I stumbled upon a cave in my desperate flight, and as I entered, I felt a surge of relief. The darkness of the cave seemed to swallow me whole, and the voices and figures faded into the distance. I stayed in the cave for what felt like an eternity, my mind shattered by the horrors I had witnessed. The isolation and the island's relentless psychological torment had pushed me to the brink of madness. When I finally emerged from the cave, the island had changed. The shadows no longer whispered and the grotesque figures were gone. It was as though the island had released its grip on my mind, but the scars of the experience remained. I made my way to the shoreline where a boat had miraculously washed ashore. It was my only way off the island, and I wasted no time in setting sail. The island faded into the distance, a haunting memory that would forever linger in the corners of my mind. As I left the cursed island behind, I couldn't help but wonder if the horrors I had experienced were real or simply the delusions of a fractured mind. The island had become a nightmarish crucible where the boundaries between reality and madness had blurred and the true horror was the darkness that lay within us all. Title, Coven of the Forgotten Isle The legends of the cursed island had drawn me in like a moth to a flame. Tales of dark rituals, ancient witchcraft, and a history shrouded in mystery had led me to this forsaken place. The island was said to be deserted, but the echoes of its eerie past still whispered on the winds that swept across its shores. As I stepped onto the rugged coastline, the barren, rocky landscape stretched before me. The sea breeze carried a sense of foreboding, and I felt a chill creep down my spine. I had heard stories of this place from the village elders, but I needed to uncover the truth that had remained hidden for generations. The sun hung low in the sky, casting long shadows upon the jagged cliffs. Seabirds circled overhead, their cries haunting and mournful, as if warning me to turn back. But my determination overcame the growing unease, 
and I continued into the heart of the island. The landscape was unforgiving, with thorny bushes and sharp rocks that clawed at my clothing. I followed an overgrown path that seemed to beckon me deeper into the wilderness, and the feeling of being watched by unseen eyes persisted. As night fell, I set up a small camp near a clearing. The stars shone brightly above, casting their silvery glow upon the island. The silence was oppressive, and the whispering winds carried faint, ghostly murmurs. The tales of witchcraft and dark rituals began to play on my imagination, and every rustle in the underbrush seemed like a sign. In the days that followed, I delved deeper into the island's heart, guided by an inexplicable force. My map became a web of confusion, and my compass spun wildly, but I couldn't turn back now. The island's secrets called out to me, their siren song impossible to resist. Each night, as I lay in my makeshift shelter, I heard strange chants carried on the wind. The rituals of the past seemed to come alive, and I could almost see shadowy figures dancing around a bonfire. I dared not venture into the darkness, for I feared what I might find. One evening, as I explored a dense thicket, I stumbled upon an ancient stone circle. The stones were weathered and covered in moss, and at the center, a gnarled tree stood, its branches twisted into grotesque shapes. I recognized the symbols etched into the stones, symbols I had seen in the forbidden tomes of witchcraft. As I touched one of the stones, a shiver ran down my spine. I knew I was standing at the heart of the island's dark past, the site of the witch's rituals. The very ground beneath me seemed to vibrate with dark energy. Whispers, cold as death, surrounded me, urging me to uncover the secrets of the stone circle. They told of an underground chamber, hidden deep below, a place where the most powerful rituals were performed, a place that held the source of the island's curse. With trepidation, I started to dig, uncovering a hidden passage beneath the stone circle. The passage led me into the bowels of the earth, and the air grew cold and damp. The whispers grew louder, and I knew I was not alone in the darkness. The passage opened into an enormous underground chamber, illuminated by an eerie, otherworldly light. Symbols and markings covered the stone walls, and a stone altar stood in the center. On the altar lay a book, its pages filled with cryptic incantations and disturbing illustrations. As I reached for the book, the whispers intensified, revealing the island's dark history. It was a coven of witches who had once inhabited the island, performing unspeakable rituals to gain power and commune with malevolent forces. But their greed for power had led to their downfall, and they had cursed the island with their dark magic. The whispers explained that the curse could only be broken by a willing participant in their rituals, a soul who would give themselves willingly to the darkness. The island had been deserted because of the curse, and it was up to me to break it. I knew I had to make a choice, a choice that could condemn or redeem the island. I picked up the book and began to recite the incantations, drawing upon the dark magic that lay within. The chamber filled with an ominous energy, and I felt an otherworldly presence surrounding me. Just as I was about to complete the ritual, a figure emerged from the shadows, a spectral presence cloaked in darkness. It was the spirit of the witch who had once presided over this chamber, her eyes filled with both malevolence and longing. The spirit revealed that the curse could only be broken by a willing sacrifice, and that sacrifice had to be me. I was to become one with the darkness, to take the place of the witches who had cursed the island in the first place. In a moment of terror, I refused, dropping the book and fleeing back through the passage. The spirit's agonized wail followed me, and I could hear her lamentations echoing in the underground chamber. The passages seemed to shift and change, leading me deeper into the catacombs. The whispers pursued me, 
growing louder and more menacing with each step. I was trapped in a never-ending labyrinth, with no escape. As I stumbled through the darkness, I began to understand that there was no way out, no way to escape the island's curse. I had unwittingly unleashed the ancient evil, and now it sought its due. In the end, I had no choice but to accept my fate. I returned to the underground chamber, where the spirit of the witch awaited. I willingly offered myself as the sacrifice to break the island's curse, to end the torment that had plagued it for centuries. As the ritual reached its climax, the island trembled, and a deafening scream filled the chamber. The ancient curse was broken, and the island was finally free. The spirit of the witch disappeared, her eyes filled with gratitude, and the darkness that had plagued the island faded into nothingness. As I left the island, I knew that I had played my part in breaking the curse, but I also carried a part of the darkness with me. The island was deserted once more, its secrets buried, and its history forever changed. I sailed away from the cursed island, the whispers fading into the distance, a reminder that some secrets are better left buried, some curses better left unbroken. The island, now free from its torment, would remain a place of dark legend and mystery, a place I would never forget.